Let's go see Cordoba together. And finally do our first ever Argentine tango lesson. This cathedral is really beautiful. No idea why here in Cordoba. The letters are A-M-O-C-B-A. Cordoba was pretty lit last night. <laughs> our meal tonight was definitely a fail. So we're definitely gonna leave now and get dessert somewhere else. Nothing a little bit of Malbec can't fix. Cheers. We're Craig and Kirsty, a full-time travel couple sharing our adventures here on YouTube. We upload new travel content every week from different parts of the world. Right now we're making our way through the entire country of Argentina and exploring everything it has to offer. If you enjoy seeing new places and real experiences, please subscribe and welcome to the adventures of Tide Knot Travellers. And welcome to Cordoba. We've made it to the heart of Argentina. So after yet another infamous Argentine overnight bus, we've made it here to the lovely Cordoba. We took a couple of days because we've done a lot of these overnight buses and they take their toll. So we had a few days to kind of sleep, do some work, catch up. And now is our first day to go and explore Cordoba. We're really excited. It's a very Spanish town and it's known for its Spanish colonial architecture and we are really excited. Also, what I would say is I've had to scrub up a little bit on my <laughs> Spanish language because people here really don't speak a lot of English. So if you are gonna come here, make sure you've at least got a basic level of English. So I've been taking extra lessons before coming here and I've upped my uh, Spanish lessons so that I can kind of get us through ordering food and just talking to people. But yeah, so Craig and I are really excited to be exploring Cordoba today or Explorable as Craig keeps calling it. <laughs> So let's go and see what this incredible city has to offer. It's supposed to be a very intellectual city. It's known for having lots of university students. And we've just passed a load who cheered for us as we <laughs> started our video. So a few days to recover from the awful... <laughs> we take that as a warm welcome from them. <laughs> Come on, let's go see Cordoba together. through Plaza de la Independencia which is beautifully patriotic as you'd imagine and there's a memorial for 40 years since the war in the Malvinas Islands uh, back in 1982 and also just to the left of us there's a big building there and last night we actually had enough energy in us to book and finally do our first ever Argentine tango lesson. <laughs> it <laughs> so was a lot of fun. It was really fun. We ran out of time to do it in Buenos Aires when we were there and we had lots of requests from all of you to try that so we did. We went ahead and booked ourselves a lesson, 90 minutes and this guy was a pro. And <laughs> <laughs> so are you. <laughs> I got by. Um, but yeah, stay tuned to the end of the video because we will show you how that went down and I highly recommend our tango instructors because they were so lovely. They were a young couple, similar age to us and they are doing their own thing independently, teaching uh, dance Argentine tango around the world. And they're currently here in Cordoba and you can book them on Airbnb. Also, it was our yeah. first ever Airbnb experience. We usually just do Airbnb accommodation. So yeah, that was really cool. Thumbs yeah. up for that. It was a fantastic <laughs> way to book it. They were really friendly, lovely people. We just got chatting and we're chatting for ages. And I swear the lesson was more than 90 minutes. Yeah. It's a really, really good, intimate one-on-one -on -one lesson. We were very lucky. Yeah we, yeah, we weren't expecting it. We thought there was going to be a group, but it was just, just Craig and I. So it was a bit like, oh, <laughs> just us then. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We did the Argentine tango here in Cordoba. And now today we've got the sunshine. And we're going to go and see it. Thank you. 
corazón It's like a really nice place if you want to do some shopping and we just want our way through to the cathedral and there's like musicians everywhere um, although I think there's definitely a siesta going on as, as usual here in Argentina because some of the shops are just opening now and it's like 4.30 in the afternoon <laughs> <laughs> we're on court of a time yeah <laughs> yeah the musicians are fantastic and loads of market stalls and loads of interesting things to to look at we're about to cross the street and there's a big square with uh, flower markets there's lots and of nice trees here as well i believe this is the cathedral so let's go and check it out yeah there's lots of lovely trees along these streets which give you lots of shade from the sun so that's really nice So we just stopped for a quick rest here in Plaza San Martin and right across from us you can see Cordoba Cathedral. So the cathedral was built in 1577 and it took almost 200 years to be built. And it's also the longest continually working Catholic church here in Argentina. So yeah, it's pretty cool. I really want to see it at night though because it looks really beautiful in all the pictures at night. They light it all up and it looks all kind of golden hues in the dark. But yeah, San Martin Plaza is very nice, lots of musicians playing, nice place to grab a coffee and just sit here in the shade, lots of trees around and it's the very centre of Cordoba so we're right in the centre of the city right now <laughs> Yeah, there's another huge Argentina flag just over there there's some other either governmental or palatial buildings and there's a statue over there as well with a man riding a horse <laughs> Yeah, it's really cool, I like this square They also really love their flags here in Argentina <laughs> very patriotic. We've come here at a beautiful time of day so you've just got the sun gradually going down behind the, uh, the cathedral and it looks beautiful. Yeah, wow, I've been inside a lot of religious buildings and this cathedral is really beautiful. After exploring San Martin Square, we're feeling a bit hungry, so we're going to head over to an area called Güemes, uh, which is kind of like Palomo Soho in Buenos Aires, um, and we're going to go and find some food. Yeah, and some drinks. <laughs> Argentina. We're just wondering, we have no idea why here in Cordoba the letters are A-M-O-C-B-A rather than Cordoba. No idea why that is but they still look lovely, there's cool water fountain behind them. But yeah, if you know, let us know in the comments why those are the letters instead of Cordoba. There must be a good reason I'm sure. So after about a 20 minute walk we've arrived at Guimes. It was a really cool area, loads of places to eat, drink and shop along the streets here and if you come here I really highly recommend heading into any little courtyards off of the main street because there's loads of little hidden gems in there. We're going to go and explore this one um, and explore a few others and just find somewhere to get some food. Also I will point out it is Monday and it's only 6.30 so it's mega early so it's very quiet which is why we've come here now so it's easy enough to film. But yeah, later on in the evening it does get really busy. We came here last night after we did our uh, tango, which you'll see soon, um, and had some cocktails and the place was completely alive at night. So yeah, really cool place to come and hang out if you like the party scene. Cordoba was pretty lit last night. <laughs> and also there's, um, there's a fair here at the weekend. So Saturdays and Sundays uh, in the afternoons they have like market stalls and loads going on there as well. So yeah, loads to do here in little old Guimes. But yeah, we're going to go find some food and drink because after walking around a city all day, we need it. <laughs> So an hour 
hour and 30 minutes after we uh, came into this restaurant, we finally have our food. <laughs> So I think there was a bit of a lost in translation thing here. This has probably been the most challenging experience we've had in Argentina and in Cordoba. We've, been, we've eaten out a few times and this has been the most challenging we've had so far. Uh, basically, every time we sit down to order food, we obviously have to use Google Translate to figure out what's uh, on the menu. So while we were doing that, the guy came over to take our order. We made our drinks order and then said, could we have two more minutes? And then he went away. And then we were looking at the menu decided what we wanted and then he came past and said oh can we can we order and he's like yeah 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 without really giving us the, the time to figure it out uh, and then he wandered around didn't take our order he was really busy so you know and there's only one waiter up here as well where we're sitting so yeah eventually he came over and handed us a check and I was like no no we, we want to eat like come in come in and he was like ah ah and I was like okay we've already been here like 45 minutes now it's taking a long time so then we ordered food and then he got confused about that and then they came back up and said that the food we ordered they'd run out of. So yeah, here we are an hour and 30 minutes later and we finally have some food. <laughs> we're super hungry. So we're going to tuck into this and yeah. <laughs> and obviously our drinks have gone and we tried to order more drinks and that was difficult as well. So yeah, hopefully we'll get a drink at some point. <laughs> food was definitely a little bit subpar. I feel like they're maybe really busy tonight. Um, it's really hard to be negative on camera. It's so easy when we have these vlogging days to do lovely things, eat really nice food and say really positive things. But the truth is our meal tonight was definitely a fail. <laughs> I had a, what was supposed to be like a, a croc monsieur. And if you, like from my experience, they're toasted. This is like squishy bread that is definitely not toasted and the cheese was cold, not even slightly melted. And the egg was undercooked. It had all the like slimy stuff, like a lot of slimy stuff. So yeah, not, not, the, not the best meal. So we're definitely gonna leave now and get dessert somewhere else, which is a shame because this place was the place we came to because they have nice desserts and things, but we're kind of done. You know when you're just like, one too many things there, we're, we're done. <laughs> we did luckily though manage to get the attention of a different waitress as she went past. We literally tried to grab her and managed to order a, a smoothie. So <laughs> at least we got, got some service. But yeah, I think we're just gonna quickly pay the bill and, and get out. <laughs> oh, actually, yeah, this was this was actually supposed to be a strawberry smoothie, and I'm pretty sure this isn't strawberry. I did say frutilla, frutilla, which is the Spanish word for strawberry, um, and they had it on, the, and I pointed to it on the menu as I said it. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so here we are, back on day two. We had planned yesterday to quickly come and see this cathedral but you know after the disaster we decided that's enough for one day and went to sleep <laughs> so this cathedral is completely different to the one we saw yesterday as you can see uh, it's built by an Italian architect in the gothic and neo-gothic style and it's called the temple of the sacred heart of Jesus I'm not going to attempt to pronounce it in Spanish because it's about 10 different Spanish words and that is way out of my uh, vocabulary limit um, and it's got a more casual name as well simply known as the Church of the Capuchins again this is all said in English there's a proper Spanish title for it but in English that's what it's called so yeah it looks stunning from the outside sadly as you can see it's got the spire on the left hand side is missing but I kind of think like it looks kind of oddly beautiful it kind of loses its symmetry but adds some cool character and all the pictures you see they're not attempting to fix it and I just kind of like that and the one that is still there sort of has a familiar look to the Sagrada Familia in Barcelona. We're going to head inside and check it out from the inside because if it looks this cool from the outside, I can't wait to see what the inside looks like. We're fairly late in the day here in Cordoba and the sun's slowly going down as it does in this part of the world. It, the sun sets pretty slowly and you can see just parts of the church just starting to light up. Churches in this part of the world are stunning. Let's head inside. That was really beautiful inside, but I actually think the Cathedral of Cordoba that we went to yesterday was way more incredible from the inside. Don't get me wrong, this one is really cool as well, but that one was spectacular. But the thing I like about this one is the outside, definitely. If you arrive and you haven't got the time to go inside, I would skip this one and just look at it from the curb because it's the outside that is where it's all at. Um, but this one was built in 1926, as I said, by the Italian architect. 
and it took a lot less time to build than Cordoba Cathedral as well. That one took like 200 years. This one was finished in the 80s, um, despite loads of interruptions, but I guess by the 1900s they had a lot more uh, things to build these buildings quicker. But yeah, the outside of this, this architecture is absolutely stunning. I have no idea still why the left hand spire isn't there. I did try to find out, but there's no information about it, so yeah. Feel free to let me know if you know. <laughs> I think it just adds an extra charm to it. It looks really cool. And now it's like going into the early evening, so the lights are going on and it's like all golden inside the windows at the top. It's amazing. And also I found out that it's decorated with capuchins and that's why it's known as the Capuchin Church as well. So yeah, it's pretty cool. I like this little uh, tiny bit of sightseeing each day. Now we're going to attempt to go and get some food again. Hopefully we'll have a bit more success than we did last night. <laughs> Let's go back over to Grimes. So we've made our way back over to the really cool area of Guemes, as you can see. And there's loads of these little like alleyways, urban alleyways, with little businesses, bars and restaurants. It's just such a cool area. So tonight we decided to go into a different alleyway to where we were last night, off of the main street, and see if we can find some restaurants. And of course, in this one there's loads as well, so we're just going to try one and hope for better results. We've had a few recommendations of ones here, but like the places have been recommended have all been brunch places. And obviously we're kind of looking for dinner. We ended up with like a brunchy dinner last night. So. Yeah. Also, it feels really weird calling them alleyways because it doesn't do them justice. Courtyards. There's so much more. Like it's bigger than a courtyard. It's <laughs> like an alleyway, but not an alleyway. But yeah, come off of the main streets and just check out these little areas because there's so much to see. There's like brewery places and places to get dinner. Cheers! So we've just come into Standard 69 which is a cute little restaurant that we found in this courtyard that we were walking along and already we're having a much smoother experience. Within minutes of walking in we were greeted and the guy gave us several wines to try. We chose our favourite Malbec and we've got a nice table and He's already given us the menu and said that we can order from 8 o'clock, which is fine. Gives us 20 minutes to sit and drink some wine. And then we've already seen the menu and it looks great. So yeah, really excited. This is kind of more the service we expected. I think we were just unlucky last night, but tonight is definitely redeeming itself here in Brunas. <laughs> so far, so good. Cheers. <laughs> Nothing a little bit of Malbec can't fix. <laughs> Safe to say, our faith has definitely been restored in the restaurants of Guimes. The dip is like the nicest taste of everything is so fresh. It's like an aioli with like a limey taste to it. The wine is gorgeous here and the staff have been lovely and yeah, everything looks great. It's kind of like a tapas place. So you could basically have breakfast, lunch and dinner here at um, Standard 69. There's a bakery across um, across the alleyway, the courtroom, the courtyard, whatever you want to call it, um, where you can get like your pastries for breakfast and then you can sit outside and have coffee and cake in the day and then by night at 8 p.m. it changes to what we have right now, which is like a tapas place. So we've ordered like two or three dishes each and we're just going to have some food on the table and share it all. But for now we've got warm crusty bread and some limey flavoured aioli. Like it's, it's incredible. So good and so fresh. Big fan of this place. <laughs> So nice. So our food has just arrived and it looks amazing and smells incredible. So I've ordered the carrot flavoured hummus which comes with some nice grilled pitches that look salted and toasted and really nice. And it also comes with some smoked cheese. I don't know the Spanish word for it, but it also looks really good. It's got like some cashews on there and some pomegranates, can't wait. Uh, and Craig's gone for a Moroccan chicken dish and a Spanish omelet. So yeah, can't wait to tuck in. And it was all served by super friendly staff in a really timely manner. So we are some happy campers. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. We hope you liked the video, even the downsides, but we thought we've got to be real, we're going to show you the good and the bad. But we're having a great time in Cordoba and this food and drink is amazing. <laughs> Cheers. 
As promised, here's us finally taking an Argentine tango lesson after months of travelling around Argentina. We only have one more stop off in this country before we head off to explore more of the continent of South America. So we are glad we made time to try the tango whilst we were still here, and especially as we ended up with a private lesson dancing in the streets of Cordoba with Daniela and Hector, who were so patient and a lot of fun to hang out with. So much so, we met up for dinner a few nights later and even went to a milonga together, which may have been one of the most authentic nights of our travels so far. If you're in the area and looking to try the tango, we highly recommend looking these two up on Airbnb. We liked the pace and it felt a lot less intimidating than attending a big class. Join us next time as we arrive in the city of Salta, where we hire a car to explore the incredible and diverse nature of northern Argentina. We leave the tropical temperatures and head out to the desert, where thanks to the crazy road surfaces, we have an unexpected overnight stay. For daily updates on our travels, head over to Instagram at Tidenot Travelers, or for exclusive behind-the-scenes content, we'd love you to join us on Patreon. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. This country's huge, got no choice. But yeah, so after that we finally got the chance to get here into Cordoba and we've had a few days to recover from the awful... <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Gonna take that one again. <laughs> And it's also the longest continually working. Uh, <laughs> and it's also the longest continually working. And it's also the longest continually running Catholic. So we're on our way to. So we're on our way to Guimes to get some food, and we've just stopped off at the main square here in, in the boulevard of San Juan. off on the main square of San Juan. Is that right? Again, what is it? Okay. So we've just stopped off in the main square of San Juan on the boulevard of what? <laughs> and when you come here, there's loads of places along the street so you can get a couple of there. <laughs> get a couple of there.